This is my 11th State of the Province Address, launching the Provincial Legislature's annual calendar. It is the penultimate one before the end of this administration's second term. We inherited a government from the party that is now in the Honourable Opposition that had no clean audits at all. Now some of our departments are on their way to double figures in their number of consecutive unqualified audits. And this year we ensured that 11 out of 11 provincial public entities received clean audits. A full house. <laughs> the immense challenge of the province's longest drought on record will test our capabilities to their limits at all levels of government. Although bulk water is its mandate, the National Department of Water and Sanitation, which I will hereafter refer to as the DWS, has not made funding available for augmentation in this crisis because the National Treasury has literally turned off their funding tap following a disastrous audit outcome. As a result, the City of Cape Town has stepped into the breach with aquifer extraction, water reuse and desalination projects to the tune of some 5.9 billion rand over the five-year medium-term revenue expenditure framework. The provincial government, operating on a very constrained budget, has diverted over 369 million rand from our core functions to supplement disaster funding since 2015-16. I want to congratulate the committed Cape Tonians Order. who have worked so hard to reduce their water consumption. We need enough water to see us through next summer and into the winter of 2019. We cannot take that for granted and we cannot rely on rainfall alone. Saving water even during winter and harvesting the rain that falls remain of crucial importance. The provincial government is playing its part in the water saving effort, Speaker, with an estimated 90,000 litres saved each day in key government office facilities. Overall, we have reduced our water consumption since 2016 levels by 46%. Our groundwater and maintenance projects are also on track in other municipalities at risk, such as Neisner, Kanelant, B2, Matsikama, Langeberg and Tierwarteskloof. The city has also done admirable work reducing water leaks to global standards and managing demand down to levels lower than the late 1990s, even as Cape Town's population has grown by one million residents. The city is ramping up augmentation from about 120 million litres per day by July 2018, mainly from aquifers, to about 300 million litres per day by September 2020, including reuse and desalination. Honourable Speaker, the drought and other natural disasters run like a thread through the province's recent economic history. But we remain a resilient economy, backed by a capable state committed to serving the interests of citizens and creating a climate for economic growth. Honourable Bianchi. Let me provide the Honourable Bianchi with some evidence. A total of 598,000 new jobs were added to the Western Cape since the fourth quarter of 2009, the year we took office. Since 2014, we have seen over 7.2 billion rand of investments in the province. We've also closed a total of 64 trade deals to the value of 11.1 billion rand since 2014. Our Africa expansion program has committed to 691 million in deals to date. Honourable Speaker, we are very serious about economic growth and we are equally serious about land reform, whether urban or rural. There is currently a 59% national backlog in the transfer of ownership to subsidise housing beneficiaries. In the Western Cape, we have brought this down to 25%, from 65% to 25%. In total, we have delivered over 82,830 title deeds to beneficiaries since 2009. 
Honourable Speaker, we are forging ahead with a set of catalytic housing projects aimed at the poorest residents that will transform the urban landscape for the better. A total of 105,201 housing opportunities are in the pipeline for completion by 2022. Honourable Speaker, in pursuit of a connected, high opportunity society for all, we have launched one of our biggest flagship infrastructure projects of our final term, namely the Broadband Game Changer. Speaker, we have reached our target of full broadband coverage with a total of 1,875 sites, including over 1,200 schools, over 200 libraries and approximately 400 other public facilities. Libraries, Madam Speaker, remain a key way in which citizens across the province can access information. Our 371 library centres account for more than 20% of all public libraries in the country. We recognise that reliable internet connection is also essential if we want to create the foundations for an effective learning environment in our schools and prepare learners for life in the 21st century. That is why we have put major resources behind our e-learning game changer, which is one of the three focused on providing opportunities for young people to succeed in life. The other two are our after schools and apprenticeship game changers. By the end of this term of office speaker, 350 schools will have a full local area network connecting every instruction room to the internet. And by the end of March, almost 900 schools will have connectivity coverage at selected points in the school. The number of learners engaged in regular and consistent after-school programming has increased to over 72,000, a 264% increase since 2014. We have worked with employers to identify the technical and vocational jobs most needed in our five priority sectors in the province and are now focusing on ensuring there are sufficiently skilled young people to meet this demand. Our target is to have 11,300 qualified apprentices enter the labour market by 2019. To cope with the growing demand, we have stretched infrastructure budgets to their very limits. We have built on average 14 schools and 265 new classrooms for every year in office since 2009. This amounts to 131 schools and close to 2,400 classrooms. There has been a concomitant growth in public health care demand. We have spent over 5.6 billion rand on capital infrastructure since 2009, 3.8 billion on new and replacement infrastructure and 1.8 billion on maintenance. Enforcement on our roads has also received a major boost from the introduction of random breathalyzer testing. After just four months of operation, suspected alcohol-related motorist fatalities in the province declined by 14.4% compared to 2016 figures and 23.8% since 2050. As for our roads, a full 95% of kilometres travelled by our road users are on roads with a fair to very good grade condition, based on a comprehensive survey. In total, we've spent over 11 billion rand on road infrastructure since 2014, half on maintaining the good network we have and half on construction. We are keeping our communities connected and economically active through this crucial work. A source of constant frustration during our time in office has been the lack of a direct operational mandate over policing. South Africa's provinces are amongst the few elected regional governments in the world without this direct mandate. Last year, the Western Cape Cabinet resolved that the army should be brought in as a short-term emergency measure to support policing in gang hotspots. This is entirely justified as gangs have in some areas effectively usurped the authority of the state and the conventional law enforcement agencies. <coughs> Honourable Speaker, let me turn to Manenberg. We are working with the community Steercom on an ambitious programme to bring a regional hospital and schools upgrade to the area, including a school of skills. The City of Cape Town is also investing in various upgrades to public infrastructure in the community, Order. including lighting, roads and parks. The long-term vision for the Manenberg upgrade is the construction of a youth lifestyle campus in Manenberg, a network of education and after-school facilities linked by safe promenades and upgraded lighting and infrastructure. <laughs>